Welcome back to FT Market. So we have a deal, or at least a deal on how to reach a deal on Greece. What's the bond market reaction going to be? With me to discuss this is Richard McGuire, who's the head of rate strategy at Rabobank. Richard, welcome to the Financial Times. Can you sum up very briefly your reaction to the proposals that have been set out in Brussels the early hours of this morning? Well, it was, took a long time coming. There was a 17-hour marathon talk over Sunday night into, into Monday morning. and It was only, only coming into the office this morning that we saw from the headlines that a deal uh, has been agreed. Which is what markets were looking for. Which is what markets were looking for. We travelled in hope at the end of last week. The markets were already pricing in a good chance uh, of a deal towards the end of, uh, end of last week. Um, it was looking touch and go over the weekend, but uh, Monday morning, uh, clearly we have uh, the, uh, the, the, the initial uh, outline of a deal. Let's put it in context. If we have our first chart, which shows how the um, bond yields of uh, the peripheral countries, Spain, Italy, Portugal, have behaved so far this year, um, quite a complicated, lots of things going on this year, um, most notably, of course, Eurozone quantitative easing, which sent yields down at the beginning. Then they were going back up again. Um, was this worries about Greece that we saw during May and June? Uh, no, I think during this uh, early part here, I think that was what we would term a fundamental reassessment. Uh, core of Eurozone yields. economic prospects. Uh, exactly. Uh, after QE, the market started to price in uh, a much larger degree of inflation coming through the pipeline as the ECB was printing money. Yeah. Even so, uh, German yields were falling and peripheral spreads uh, were tightening. And at this point, at the beginning of May, we saw a very sharp sell-off uh, in core fixed income in German yields and peripheral spread widening. But that dip in yields we saw at the end of last week, you mentioned before, that was very much sort of expectations of a deal on um, Grexit, uh, avoiding Grexit. Absolutely. I think more recently, the, the, the turbulence we've seen here in peripheral yields and peripheral spreads is due to the market becoming concerned over a possible Greek exit. And then, end of last week, optimism that a deal was in the offing and yields fell. And yet the reaction has not been overwhelming. We've seen um, some drops, but the market's not reacted um, dramatically uh, this morning to the deal in, in Brussels. Where do you think peripheral bond yields are going to go from now on, given what we've got in terms of a outline deal? Well, I think the, uh, the path of least resistance is for spreads to narrow The difference further. between these peripherals and German bond yields, yeah. Absolutely. Driven by higher German bond yields and lower peripheral yields. So I think they would meet, uh, start to converge from Less above and below. Less worries about Grexit, I presume. Yes, abs absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think the muted market reaction today is, is a product for two things. One, we were clearly travelling in hope, as I said, at the uh, end of last week. So peripheral spreads versus uh, German bonds did narrow. Peripheral yields did fall notably at the end of last week. Yeah. So that good news has been priced in. And there still are some hurdles that have yet to be crossed. OK, if we look at our the second chart, we've put all these um, moves in a historical perspective, just showing how, how we reacted during the crisis in 2012. We had much bigger spikes there. The reaction this time, the worries, if there were worries, uh, much less um, pronounced. I suppose the question is, um, if we look at these yields, do you think we're ever going to get back to the sort of convergence we had between Eurozone uh, bond yields and German yields that we had pre-crisis? Uh, I think we won't get to the narrowness of spreads that we saw prior to the crisis. There's still question marks about the Eurozone. I think so. I think uh, the, the genie has been let out of the bottle. We understand that there is some systemic risk, and I think there will be residual credit risk premium between Eurozone bond markets until such time as they agree to share liabilities the, across the Eurozone. Grexit risks, not, Grexit risks have not disappeared, in other words. Well, no, they, they haven't disappeared. They will, I think, uh, come back. I don't think that uh, this particular Pandora's box has been closed forever. I think that Greek debt, uh, there remains a question mark over its sustainability. Uh, the market will be, no doubt, reassured over the coming months and possibly even years from a bailout. But the sustainability of that debt is likely to remain in question and hence Grexit fears are likely to return. Uh, very quickly, let's look at our final chart just showing the German uh, yields, which you mentioned a few times. Um, picking up um, since, since April on, uh, as you say, the reassessment of the economic prospects for the Eurozone. Where do you see German yields going? That depends, presumably, a lot more on now Grexit has been avoided for now. It depends, presumably, on the US Fed. Uh, certainly that is a, a, a key driver. We think that uh, German yields will rise towards the end of the year, but only modestly so. Our forecast for the end of the year is 10-year German Bund yields at 1.1%. Uh, but I think that they will rise faster than US yields. Uh, I think that the US is the only country, only major country in the world that is not involved in the de facto global currency war. I think China represents a threat in terms of global disinflation, and we don't think the Fed will be raising rates anytime soon at the back end of this year at the very earliest. Richard, we'll have to stop there. Thank you very much. So, complicated picture there for German and uh, Eurozone peripheral bund yields, but signs that Grexit has disappeared from the worry list.